just take for granted that there are pills, drops, or salves for just about any condition as close as the corner drugstore. But in the 1930s, pneumonia, influenza, polio, and a host of other diseases that we now treat with relative ease were classified as fatal in nearly every case. But then, as now, there were good people who had the courage to keep searching for ways to help ease the suffering of those around them. One of the most basic concepts of medicine, the desire to ease suffering and restore health, can lead to a bond between doctor and patient, a bond strong enough to produce a miracle. Dr. Michael Conrad was a dedicated research physician working on a variety of diseases in the 1930s. But his desire to do more for the patients, to find some way to cure those he now had to watch wither and die, fueled a burning desire to do everything he could to expand the healing power of medicine. And whenever he could, he worked directly with the patients. Dr. Conrad never found time for marriage nor social functions. He was entirely dedicated to discovering better, more efficient methods and cures. One night, he put a substance into a petri dish and watched as it destroyed a particularly virulent infection before his eyes. Furthermore, it didn't harm white blood cells. Dr. Conrad had discovered a marvelous new life-saving drug. The problem was that he couldn't seem to produce enough of the experimental substance to effect a total cure of his patients. There was improvement, but no cure, and Dr. Conrad was certain it was due to the small dosage. He spent hours treating patients with the drug, but the solution to the substance's growth continued to elude him. Still trying to cure the incurable? Why don't you get out in the sunshine sometimes? Get some fresh air. Just as I thought. I'll come back later. At the end of each day, when even the sympathetic and dedicated hospital administrator was ready to go home, Michael Conrad stayed in his laboratory. Dr. Conrad was by nature a loner, but lately, he'd found himself noticing another who, much like himself, seemed to spend most of her time alone, too. This nurse was completely devoted to helping ease the suffering of others. If everyone were as nice and helpful as you, this would be a wonderful place. Thank you, Doctor. Since the death of her husband from influenza, Rachel Gibbons had been raising her son Billy by herself. Now, in the midst of the Great Depression of the 1930s, Rachel considered herself fortunate to have any job. But having a job she loved was even more of a blessing. She considered herself very fortunate indeed. And it showed both in how she carried herself and how she treated her patients. The strong feelings that came over Dr. Conrad each time he encountered Nurse Rachel was something quite unfamiliar to him. Things that couldn't be put under a microscope or otherwise measured normally made him very uncomfortable. But in this case, the feeling was quite welcome. Here you go. Perhaps, he thought, Linda, it was go. time he began to share his life and dedication with someone. <coughs> Sounds like a cold coming on. I'm fine. And don't forget, you promised to take me to that ball game on Saturday. Oh, I'm so sorry. Billy, I can't. I have to work. They're shorthanded here. I heard that. You know, the administrator's been bugging me to take an afternoon off and get some sunshine. And I haven't been to a ball game since I was about that high. Would you like to go to the game with Dr. Conrad? Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Dr. Conrad. That'd be swell. He feels hot. Oh, it's probably just a small cold. Will you keep that zipped up? Stay warm. Okay, thanks, Dr. Conrad. You keep your jacket on. Stay warm, Billy, all right? I love you. It's great of you to take him to the game when I'm working here. Well, I'm, I'm trying to make points with his mother.
Rachel was a bit surprised and pleased by Dr. Conrad's unexpected boldness. But then she saw something that caused her to momentarily forget all else. Through the window that looked out onto the street, Rachel could see a grim reminder of the dark times we now call the Great Depression. Down in the windy, lonely alley, several people were huddled together, trying to gain some measure of relief by staying close to one another. They were obviously sick, and Rachel knew that with no money and no place to go for help, thousands of poor people in this city were going to simply die. Rachel turned to ask Dr. Conrad if he could think of any way to get medical help for these people, but Dr. Conrad had suddenly disappeared. You sent for me. What's the problem? His temperature's back up to 101. It's been four hours since his last injection. I'll go... There's no more medicine. I can't get the mold to grow fast enough. Just keep him warm. Lots of fluids. The patient Dr. Conrad had just seen was the 11th pneumonia victim to come to the hospital in the last few days. One by one, each of the previous 10 had died. And Dr. Michael Conrad vowed once again to do everything in his power to see to it that this man would not be the 11th death. There simply had to be a way to make this substance grow faster. But working as he was, with such limited resources, deep down, he knew it would take a miracle. When the day of the baseball game arrived, Dr. Conrad was utterly absorbed in the problem of his pneumonia patient. But he put his work aside for the first time in months to do something pleasurable and relaxing. Oh boy, that was one of the best games I've seen in a long time. In the sixth inning, that double play, that was the best play of the whole game. The underhand throw is second base, that doesn't sound good at all, Billy. That was pretty bad. I think we'd better get you to the hospital. Breathe in, please. Out. In. Out. Again, please. It's okay, Doc. You did all you could do. It's not enough. It's just not enough. I see you got my requisition list. These are very expensive chemicals. I'm so close to a new drug. If we just, if we just had what we needed around here, these people wouldn't be dying. With just a little money. Dr. Conrad, maybe you haven't heard, but this country's in a depression. Nobody currently has the money.
On his way back to the laboratory, he checked in on his young friend Billy and saw that Billy was now being moved from the examination room to a hospital bed. Clearly, the exam had showed that Billy should be admitted to the ward immediately. Well, I deal with it all day, doctor. Don't think you have to be gentle with my feelings. Does my boy have what killed all those other people or not? Yes, he does. Of all the unpleasant duties he was called upon to perform each day, Dr. Conrad could think of none to equal this. The strain of pneumonia that had killed 11 patients in the ward had now taken hold of Rachel's only son. As the days went by, Michael Conrad grew more and more frustrated. Watching any patient die of pneumonia was difficult enough. But now, he shared all the suffering of a 10-year-old friend who had never lived to be 11. What was worse, he felt the cure was all but within his grasp. All he needed was more time or a miracle. For the first time in his life, Michael Conrad felt a towering rage take control of his body. When he brushed the chemicals away, he saw that in only the last few minutes, the samples had grown to several times their original size. Miraculously, he had found the secret to making the substance grow. Nurse? Nurse? Take these 
and clean them very carefully. Thank you. If this works, it's going to take some time. The best thing for you to do is stay with him. Tell him we love him. And we want him to come out of this okay. Lisa, we love him. So congratulations is in order. You did it. But how? Well, you know I've been experimenting for some time. And I just couldn't get the mold to grow. Then... And the mold started growing. By the way, what are you going to call it? Penicillin. The basis for the drug was a simple mold, and the Latin word for mold is penicillin. <coughs> Today, Penicillin is one of our modern medical miracles. It has saved millions of lives in the half century since that night it first saved the life of young Billy. Penicillin, a mold, a wonderful cure with a strange and miraculous origin. Pretty painful, huh? Well, it was nothing sort of a miracle. Um, uh, the fact that I arrived there at the hospital to same time the doctor discovered penicillin and nowadays everybody takes those drugs for granted but back then it was all new and all guesswork and it just makes me a part of history the fact that i was one of the first people to get to use penicillin and i don't know why this happened to me but i know there must have been some special reason <laughs> <laughs> 